Hey there, quilting friends. So I'm up in my office today. I'm doing some video editing and I found this old video I did a few years ago that was never published. And it's all about um, dry iron versus steam iron and a little product, uh, product review, product demo. So if that's something you're interested in, an opinion of a designer on um, dry iron versus steam iron, why don't you stick around? Hey gang, it's Penny Dominguez from Cabin in the Woods Quilters and I'm upstairs in the studio at the cabin today and I wanted to talk to you about pressing. One of the things that I've been asked recently at some of my classes is steam iron or dry iron. I ran across something that I thought would be kind of a fun little way to demonstrate why I iron and press everything with a dry iron instead of a steam iron. And I know this is a great debate, so I'm not, again, telling you that you have to do it with a dry iron or you have to do it with a steam iron. I'm just giving you my opinion and why I do things the way that I do. Well, first off, let me talk about why I use a dry iron. Most of the time I am working with small pieces that I'm piecing together or I'm working with scraps and I want everything to stay as straight um, and as accurate as possible. I also work a lot with um, Terial Magic, which is a water soluble project and I work with water soluble glues. In my opinion, I believe that a steam iron adds more moisture and therefore while I'm trying to press uh, Terial Magic items that are somewhat damp, partially dry, to press them flat, the steam iron's actually also counteracting that by adding that water, uh, that steam to everything and I don't think it presses as flat and as paper-like as I would like. The other thing is when you're using a steam iron, you can actually wet your project down and when you wet it down, you loosen the fibers and if you iron it with a heavy hand, you can stretch your blocks. I would say that in doing group projects, you can almost tell when a project is, everybody uses the same instructions, you can kind of tell when someone has maybe not as good of eyesight when they're cutting or a heavier uh, quarter inch seam, quarter inch seam allowance than what should be, or you know, haven't really tested their quarter inch seam. And you can also tell when someone uses a steam iron. Usually when they use a steam iron, I can tell because the pressing seams are really taut and it seems to be askew only in one direction, which is kind of weird, or it's really askew sort of at the corner because for whatever the reason people tend to press a block, if they have the block straight on in front of them like this, they're pressing this way. And so it tends to want to stretch towards the corner. So I'm working with a very basic block and the block is a very basic background for a project that I'm about to do. And what I did is I hit the project, I spritzed it with my Terial Magic Spray and then got called away to something else. And so I allowed the project to just sit and dry completely. And when I came back and I saw it before I pressed it and thought, this is the perfect time to illustrate what moisture does to your fabrics. Let me hold this little piece up. And hopefully you can see what's happening here. Do you see the ripples in it? Um, it might even be easier to show you on the table, but <clears throat> what I have here are a bunch of like scrunched up seams. And that is the result. You can see it over here too. Little rippling in the fabric. Um, that's a result of me spritzing the fabric and then letting it dry. So the moisture in the fabric actually made the, the fabric do this a little bit. And so when I came back to it, it just doesn't quite look right. So a lot of times what I find out from people is they use a steam iron because a dry iron doesn't actually get the wrinkles out. I'm really worried. I'm trying to get the wrinkles out. It's a really, really wrinkled project. It's a heavy fold. It's a fat quarter that I've had in my stash with stuff sitting on top of it for years and I can't get the, the iron out of it, the line out of it. That happens. I use um, a foil heat 
thing mat over here and it gets really hot and so it tends to want to pull those wrinkles out but after a while they kind of wear out and it doesn't work so I'm going to show you what I bought was this cool it's called the magic pressing mat it's like a wool mat it's about I'm going to say three quarters of an inch thick and it really retains the heat and so when you're using a dry iron you can put your blocks on top of it and you can really get them um, nice and flat. I've put the camera down onto my work surface here and you can see my magic pressing board here on my cutting table and then you can see my block and now that it's laying down and the lights hitting it just right you can really see that rippling effect. So again what I did with this block is a very simple block not a lot of heavy piecing. I took the Terrio Magic I sprayed the whole thing till it was nice and saturated and then I left it to sit and dry. So you can see the rippling effect that's happened. This is the same thing that happens with your steam iron or when you take um, your starch and heavily spray your starch down on top of this item. So now if I had been ironing this instead of just gently pressing, if I'd been ironing it and it was wet, look what's happening to the fabric. You see how it's just kind of pushing out? And so here I am, I'm happily ironing and I'm making sure these wrinkles are all out. And then what's happened is my block, which started out as a 12 and a half inch block, is now a 13 inch block because I've just pulled and stretched and pulled and stretched. And the more seams I have, the worse it seems to get. Um, so if you're doing a block where you have a lot of perfect piecing and you have maybe 20, 30 pieces inside, this is where you can get some serious skewing. So using a mat like this where you can get good effects from just the pressing will help that a lot. So I have my handy dandy cordless iron over here and I'm just gonna lay this down on the pressing mat. And of course you're gonna see my block skew a little when I'm pressing it because I'm not, putting, I'm not pushing down, I'm just gliding the iron over top. Uh, because I have those ripples and everything, that's what my block's going to do. So when I'm doing something with the Terrio Magic product and I know that I'm going to have to saturate a block, I'm not going to create a background block that is super exact. I could do something very simple like this one right here in Hourglass, which when I go to trim it to size afterwards, you won't see any of the effects of any kind of skewing because I will trim the block to size. So if you're doing uh, the beautiful blooms quilt that I have with the petals and you're going to start laying your petals down, well, it's real easy to do because you can put your petals on the block, stitch your petals, and then you can cut your block afterwards to match. So I'm not super worried about being off on this type of background. If I were going to do something on a really heavy pieced background, well then I'm going to use a pressing mat because my pressing mat's going to help me press in such a way that I don't skew all of these pieces. So this is a really handy and it's a very uh, expensive or relatively expensive thing to have, um, but it's worth every penny and of course it's relatively light and you can take it back and forth to class. The one I'm using is the larger size. They have a smaller size mat, um, which, you know, that would be nice for travel as well. I chose this one because this is a fairly large block and I wanted to make sure that I got everything, the whole block on top of this mat. But this is a handy, handy tool to have. It's called the Magic Mat. Um, if you don't have one, get one. You can get one at your local quilt shop and super handy tool. Hey gang, I hope you enjoyed that older video and man, that hair, right? I clipped it, still messy today though. So I'm still a hot mess, feel under the weather. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little bit about um, the reasons why I've chosen to press with a dry iron. Um, if you like the video, click that like button. And as always, if you're enjoying the channel, hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when we publish new videos. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.